Hey, what is up, everybody? Got a, another review for you today. Um, <sighs> feel I slept a little better last night. Weird man didn't come to me in my dreams. Um, so, yeah, that's good. Um, <sighs> still a little tired, but it's early, you know. That happens. Um, on to the Uh-Oh Show. Um, the Godfather Gore, Richard Gordon Lewis's latest film. Um, pretty much a, about, um, a show, a game show called, take a guess, the Uh-Oh Show. Um. Basically, you answer two questions, um, and if you get them both right, they offer you ridiculous prizes, like trips around the world, plus a million dollars, plus dinner with a movie star, plus um, a new car, plus a boat, plus, you know. Uh, and then if not, it's uh-oh time, uh, and they spin this wheel that you see here. <clears throat> and if you notice, it, it'll say, uh, let's see, let me see, a, there's an ear over there. Um, anyway, it says ear, arm, leg, head, melt down. Um, and if you, if they, they, they spin the wheel, and whatever it lands on, uh, basically comes off your body. And this man... See, radial saw Rex is eating some some uh, flesh right there. He comes out with his giant saw, puts you on sort of a table type thing, and cuts it off. Uh oh. <laughs> um. And so basically, the show is um, just taking over the country by storm. Everybody loves it. Of course they say, you know, the producers and the people say it's fake. Um, but, of course it's real. And uh, television reporter Jill Burton um, is doing some stories on the I.O. show and her boyfriend happens to go on the show. She begs him, no, don't go, don't go. But he is an arrogant prick and decides to go anyway, well, he falls away as most of the other contestants do, and he gets his head cut off. Um, so she tries to start investigating a little more. Um, the host that you see here, Jackie, um, has become a little, a little, um, disenfranchised with the whole thing. Am I using that word right? I hope. I think so. Maybe not. I don't know. It's early. Um, he's becoming a little. He's not real sure about this 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 thing anymore. You know, he knows what's going on, but he, he he's just not into it anymore. He's getting a conscience. He says he's not, but he is. And then the kicker is the show is getting so big that. Um, the producers and the the, um, the television company want to do a spinoff show, um, and they're going to do a spinoff show called Grimm's Fairy Tales, where it's going to sort of be like, I guess, a um, it's like a Tales from the Crypt-ish uh, type thing where they do anthology little, little shorts, little short stories, um, and... He wants Jackie, the host, to be part of it, and Jackie pretty much doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, he just wants to do his uh-oh show and be done with it. He doesn't want to do anything else. He doesn't want to get involved in any other shows. Um, well, this really upsets the producer. The producer fires him and his sort of um, Vanna White-esque, I guess, uh, co-host Champagne, they get fired. Well, this 
makes him all, makes him pretty angry, and they band up with the TV reporter Jill to try to investigate and um, basically expose what's going on. So that's the gist of the story. Um, now, of course, this is the Godfather of Gore, um, and we all probably are pretty familiar with his career. You know, he did other things other than gore films, but, I mean, he did pretty much make the first gore movie, um, and um, you know, they're kind of hokey, uh, his older films, um, low budget, they didn't get great actors, um, the effects compared to, to now are, you know, not that great, but at the time were probably unbelievable. Um, and then he came back with um, Blood Feast 2. And I remember thinking, man, what is he going to do with this? How's he going to go? Because it's a different time, it's more expensive, but you can get better effects. And he really went away that I think worked with that one, which was completely tongue in cheek. Making fun of, you know, the movie was not to be taken seriously in any way, shape, or form. I mean, they made bad, terrible, off-color jokes. That was really funny. Um, and they they sort of do the same thing with this one. Um, it's still not to be taken seriously. It's very cartoony. Um, but it seems like the humor was a little lost on this one. It wasn't quite as obviously funny. I mean, it was, but the, it just seems like there were less jokes. It wasn't quite taken to that level of Blood Feast 2. Um, you know, there is a lot of gore in this. Um, it's Herschel Gordon Lewis. You can expect that. Um, the interesting thing about the gore, though, is there is some CGI blood in this movie. Believe it or not, the Godfather of Gore used CGI blood. Um, and in my opinion, it was unneeded. It was very, it was used in very minuscule amounts that I don't think enhanced anything. Um, I'm talking about parts where someone gets their arm cut off and the shot goes in fairly close, blood spurts out. He uses CGI blood to splatter on the camera. Like two little spots. Let's say they would be here and here. You can't see that. Here and here. There we go. Um, and then small things like that. And then there's one where the lady holds her arm up and she's looking at it. Because in this world, you can survive without an arm or a head. The head, you know, talks without a body. And, you know, um, she's holding up the arm. And I'm guessing he decided that there wasn't enough blood coming down from the arm in post, so he put in CGI stream of blood, which looked so bad. It was just unneeded. Um, it's not it's not overused, so it's not distracting. But the times that it is used, it's unneeded, so it is distracting. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just a little shocking that he would be using that. Um, the effects in this I don't think are as good as Blood Feast 2. Um, Blood Feast 2 had some cheesy effects, but there were a few that were pretty decent. Um, the one where the girl gets her gets her face pulled off, or, or, or I think her face is pulled back from here, and it's like the screaming skull. That was a pretty decent effect for, for the budget they had. Um, it seems that the effects aren't, as, aren't quite as good in this one. And the way that the story is told is very erratic. Um, they sort of go from show to reality and show to reality to... And then, then once the grim fairy tale show starts, they kind of intercut those little stories in with it. Which some of them are, are, are funny and stuff and cool, but it just seemed a little... It seemed a little like padding for the rest of the story that they, they didn't quite develop 100%. Um, 
overall it had its problems um, but it is a funny fun H.G. Lewis movie and I mean give you know for Christ's sakes the guy's been making movies forever he's like 80 something I mean and he's still making these things and he's still making movies like this you know you gotta give the guy credit I mean I met him in October of last year, and he's a super nice guy. Um, I know a lot of you out there have met him. Um, he's a really, really cool, really nice guy. I mean, when he comes to a show and does every single autograph for free, you know, you sit there for two days, and I'm sure he's paid for his appearance, but he makes no money off the autographs. It's pretty, pretty nice dude. Um, so, yeah, overall, not bad. Fun. Um... But I would say that Blood Feast 2 was certainly better than this one. Um, but still not bad. Features on this, you have a making of the Uh-Oh show, which is about six minutes long. Um, not very cool. Uh, kind of lame, actually. Um, but there is apparently a full-length making of the Uh-Oh show on some website. They give you the link. I don't know if it's something you're supposed to buy. I don't know if it's part of supposed to be part of that documentary. But this was just produced, this DVD. So I'm guessing it is something different, but I'm not sure. Um, you get a commentary with her for Gordon Lewis, which I listened to some of. And it's one of those commentaries where you get explained everything that's going on in the movie as you're watching the movie, which... I don't like, I kind of want to listen to stories about behind the scenes, making of, um, but that's not what you get with that commentary. Um, then you have another one with producers Andrew Allen, Andy Lalino, and Mark Ford. I didn't listen to that one. And then you get another one with actors Brooke McCarter, who played the host, Jackie, and Joel D. Winecoop, which is the producer of the show, and it's that guy right there. I didn't listen to that one, so maybe that one would be a little bit more informative about behind-the-scenes stuff. So there you go. New Herschel Gordon Lewis movie, The Uh-Oh Show. Um, tomorrow I will be starting my Countdown to Wasteland um, with Brain Damage. Uh, Frank Hannenlotter's classic brain damage. So that will be tomorrow. More in store for next week. Um, I don't have any other reviews forthcoming that aren't to do with my Wasteland Countdown. So um, there probably will be at least another one or two. Don't know what yet. Because I haven't purchased them. So I will see you guys next time.